Hi guys, I know it's been a while, but um, I thought I'd put together this video since I was going to wire up a strap pick guard. Um, I think I've got some uh, suggestions that you may not have heard before, um, and then some other stuff that uh, you've probably heard before, and it's good to hear again. Uh, anyway, uh, step one, I suggest you double check, then triple check, that you have all the components you're going to need for your installation. Got my pickups, my pots, extra wire, my switch. I'm using a different set of um, covers and knobs for that. Um, on this particular setup, I'm going to put in a grease bucket tone circuit. And because these are a vintage style um, tuner, they've actually got the countersunk screw heads. The switch comes with just regular standard uh, Phillips screw heads. And so I had to go dig through my parts and make sure I had a couple extra of the countersunk screw heads uh, type screws uh, to mount my switch. So always double check that you have, or triple check that you have everything. Um, I'll be doing something with the pots when I uh, solder those to show you something kind of cool and new. Um, also, um, things like um, have your work area prepped so you have kind of everything you think you're going to need. Um, if you need reading glasses or should wear reading glasses, use your reading glasses because this is uh, pretty uh, uh, hard to see what you're doing uh, on some of the stuff. So anyway, um, the first thing that I'm going to do here is kind of unique um, to a lot of people. And that is that um, these pots, they're designed, you don't really ever have to pull them apart. And I have run into a couple times where uh, something has hit the pot and actually caused the back to fall off. Um, I have it more happen on like Les Pauls and guitars like that than, than on strats. Uh, it just depends on how the, uh, the knobs are set on the guitar. So uh, one thing I like to do, and this is, this might be controversial, but I like to use actually a kind of a, a hot soldering iron and solder, see if you can see that, solder uh, right on the top where these bent um, components are. The, it's the back of the pot that's bent over and kind of holding everything together. Uh, putting a little dab of solder on there, not too hot that you melt everything inside, but that will um, strengthen the pot so it doesn't have that opportunity uh, to fall apart if ever it's impacted. So always uh, tin your soldering iron first. And this is a super mega hot soldering iron. So I'm just giving it a little touch on each of these. So I'm gonna do all three pots like this, um, which will again, strengthen them. These are good quality CTS pots, so I didn't think there was any issue with uh, doing what I was doing with those. Just looking at my work, yep, it all looks fine. Awesome. So I've already gone through and countersucked the screw holes on this pick guard, um, so the uh, pickup hole screws will fit. Um, this I opted for kind of a cool, it's not just a green pick guard and it's not just a perloid pick guard. It is an aged mint green perloid pick guard, which really kind of looks cool on the guitar I'm going to be putting it on, which is a candy apple red uh, rosewood fingerboard strap. Uh, totally going for the 60s vibe on that. All right, I do recommend pulling the plastic off before um, mounting everything because it's hard to get the plastic out from behind all the screws, heads, and things like that once everything's mounted. But uh, where I did my um, countersink, just need to clean it up a little bit. You can use a utility knife or a razor blade just to make sure that's all good to go. I'm not digging too hard because I don't want to damage the top of the pick guard here. Just want to get all that melted plastic out of there. Unfortunately, when you drill into this uh, moto pickguard material, it does tend to 
melt a little bit. Also, you can use this to clean up the holes around where the pots are going to go in the input jack, or in, not, and the uh, five-way switch. And yes, I'm going to use a five-way switch on this, um, the three-way that they put on the vintage guitars at the time. Uh, it's not going to fit my style. So I did want to go standard wiring on this guitar, so um, there's not going to be anything funky as far as the, the five-way switch will be typical strap five-way. Uh, the pickups that I had ordered are the typical uh, positions. The middle pickup is reverse wound, reverse polarity, which will cancel the hum in the second and fourth positions. Okay, we are cleaned and ready for install. And it's typical on strats not to use the washer when you're putting on your, your nut. So we're not going to use those. We're just going to use the nut. Now I'm facing the two tone pot slugs towards each other. You'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. Um, but doing it this way, I'll be able to utilize just the one capacitor um, to control both pots uh, for the tone control. Um, also, because I'm putting in that grease bucket circuit and you're paying you know, a few bucks extra for the parts for that, um, I only need to utilize one. So it's a way to fuse, save a couple bucks and it's actually pretty easy to solder in. Um, the diagrams I use, I'm going to use partially what comes with the stuff and partially um, what you find online. So usually I'll suggest my half inch nut driver for this, but this is a pretty safe thing. So you don't want to over tighten these, just get them pretty tight. Those lock washers that I installed, those little black washers in there will hold everything in place nicely for us. There we go. And so with those lock washers there, you can see the nuts fit just nice and flush on top there. Oh, you can see that. Anyway, yeah. Really smooth, those are gonna be great. Doesn't really matter the order you put things in here. So you can see those have the, the flat style. Uh, they're flat on the bottom, not countersunk. Into the kick guard. Um, now's a good time probably for you to mention the, uh, the five-way switch I'm using. This is a CTS brand, um, which is um, actually has a spring here. Uh, it creates kind of a little bit better, to me, uh, feel when you go from position to position. Uh, it, it gives you a little more snap. It's not 100% necessary. There's a lot of different good quality switches out there. This is just what I chose for this job. It's what I prefer. Now in mounting this, there's not a lot of room in the pick guard. You can see where the screw holes are here and here to mount it. So you want to mount the switch so the less bulky side is facing out. So you don't, you don't want that. You want the, the spring portion facing the inside. Kind of 
particular here and pick the two screw heads that look the best to me. Oh, these are all brand new. Nice. Make sure everything matches up. So do I make mistakes doing uh, this kind of stuff? I certainly do. Um, does it keep me from doing it anymore? Nope. Because uh, uh, most of these components are relatively inexpensive. Um, I mean, the most expensive part of it are the pickups themselves. And uh, those, you just don't mess with them too much. You just try to be careful from pulling on the leads too hard, things like that. Okay, so um, I'll touch on it now. I might say it again later, but um, one of my thoughts on this whole project, th this whole process, is um, quality of workmanship matters. It really does. Um, it does feel like these days uh, there's people out there just don't bother doing a good job, but it doesn't cost that much to get the right parts. It doesn't take that much time to do the job right, so... Probably a good idea to clean up as you go, too. All right, so I went with these 65 Stratocaster pickup set. Um, I was looking at it, um, the different specs, and so I wanted to go with something that's kind of full ranged all the way across. Um, these are pretty bright, but they're not horribly scooped in the mid range. Uh, they're not a super hot pick up as far as output goes. It looks like they're rated at about 5.9K, um, 2.6 Henrys uh, on each, which, you know, if you're used to vintage pickups, then that's kind of the standard. If you're used to modern pickups, you're going to think that sounds a little low. Um, so as far as pickup covers go they look pretty similar I think I'm gonna stick with what came on it because I really like the color against the green uh, although the knobs and, and switch tip are gonna look a tiny bit different but I'm gonna kind of just accept that for what it is now you can see fender used the same color cloth on all three pickups so it's kind of important to just make sure you leave the pickups in the right order that they were shipped. That way you get them installed in the right order as well. You see, you can see it was shipped with the countersunk type of screws. So I had mentioned that I countersunk these holes. I just used um, a simple countersink bit that came with this, uh, you know, 99 bit box of drill bits I bought. Uh, that was just kind of a, a mishmash of a whole bunch of different uh, types of bits. Um, and so it's a real simple one, not made to be used more than a few times, I think. Um, and so I basically just use the screw holes that um, are for the pick guard uh, to mount to the body as a reference as to hard, how deep to go. And then uh, again, kind of slow and steady. Um, I made you know a couple passes each time just to make sure that I didn't go too hard the first time. Now typically the neck pickup is the farthest from the strings. And so I am using the longest bushings, spacers, and surgical tubing instead of springs that, um, in, the, in the neck position and then I'm using the shortest ones in the back. Um, they're only just a hint different in length. So 
do go for pretty. Okay, so once you get the screws and those put on, the screws stay in place. So putting on the pickup shouldn't be a problem. In the packaging came, I think this is just a warranty card. Oh, yep, yeah, this has actually got the wiring instructions as well. So we're absolutely using those for a good part of this. Um, the grease bucket circuit came with its own directions. And so I'll kind of use a combination of the two um, to do this install. And this is nice materials and a nice case. So we're going to save that case for later. We use it. So if you've ever been in, in the guitar itself, you'll know that uh, the wire portions are supposed to face down on all three pickups. So we'll want to start these kind of carefully. These are a fiber bobbin. So we don't want to tie all this stuff down too soon because we are, we still need to see which lead is which when we hook them up to the switches. So I'm going to do kind of a modern tone setup with this. What I'd like to do, uh, or what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and wire it so the bridge pickup and middle pickup are on the back pot. And the neck pickup is on its own pot on the front. Um, that way, um, it gives me you know more master control over that neck pickup. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Some people like uh, the bridge and it by itself, and then the middle and neck on its own. Really depends. So we are once we are certain of the length that we want, we will cut clip these. Um, you don't want to go mega short, but you don't want to leave too much length either. So it's good to kind of line everything up. The back of uh, the black wires will be all soldered to the volume pot. So I'm going to leave just a little extra length. I like to also cut them so they're about going to be about the same length because I'll twist them together. But then I'll use this extra length for um, wiring up the switch. Now you can see the neck pickup wire is already the length that it needs to be at. So I could actually use that as reference for the other two. There's really no chance I'm going to take off too much wire that way. Kind of cool about this stuff too. We can just push the wires back a little bit. They're already tinned, so when we go to wire them in, it'll be a good, easy, clean job. I'm hoping when I uh, work on this, I'll be able to zoom in a little bit um, on my editing software so you can see a little closer what I'm doing. So the ground wires uh, a couple different ways you can do it um, factory they all twist them together and then solder them together all in one lug like one lump and so you just get one dab of solder holding them all down um, if you think you're going to be swapping pickups out a lot though or even at all like the bridge pickup for instance you may choose not to do that um, so you can get it off easier uh, not that it's really that much of an issue getting it off anyway so so I'm simply going to give these a twist together and then put a dab of solder on it and then I'll solder the whole thing to the back of the pot when it's time Again, we're going for cleanliness here. Uh, 
All right, so now we look at the wiring diagram. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this, this vintage wiring here. So, uh, volume, this gets bent back and that's gonna be actually grounded. And the other, the, the, so that's the volume pot and the tone pots don't get that. So you want to bend this so the contact stays there without needing any solder to hold it in place. At this point, I'll probably go ahead and just tin my uh, contacts as well. Tinning the contacts just means getting the solder melted in them so they're ready to accept the solder. Uh, that way, when you go to solder it in, you don't have to add a whole bunch of other solder. So this just needs just a little bulb right there on the end, and that's set. I also like to go through and make sure these are kind of pushed up where I'm going to want them. It might be better to go ahead and use my needle nose. So if you do this all the time, I'm sure you develop an order for things, um, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Now what you will notice I'm not doing in this project is I won't be putting the leads on for the input jack or the ground coming off the guitar because they've already, the guitar already has a pick guard on it, already has a, and I'm going to be using the leads uh, that are already on the guitar for it. So those will be just added to this project when I install the pick guard on the guitar. Um, I may go ahead and do a video for that separate, that this, because uh, I'm short on time tonight, I won't be able to get this all put together um, today. Now you may have seen that little driplet of solder that just kind of fell off and, and went on there. Um, if I was working on an open guitar, I would absolutely cover the finish on the back of that guitar or wherever you're working because that drip of solder is hot enough to melt the finish. If it's nitro for sure, if it's poly, you might get lucky. So yes, I definitely suggest being as careful as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that my twisting didn't stay together good here. So I'm actually going to pull this apart and redo it. little bit more lead available. So like I said, I'm can't say that I'm perfect every time with this stuff. It always comes out well, but sometimes it takes a couple times to get things right. So what I might do here, let's twist these two together first because those are most likely never coming out. Do 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 just give it a little twist. And then um the bridge one I'll throw on last. Uh, this is usually 22 gauge wire, so it's it's pretty um, pretty durable, and because it's pre-tinned, it, it holds together pretty well. You still want to take some care. It may look like I'm just racking on it, but I'm I'm being pretty careful. So now when we get this done, these leads really have to be kind of up out of the way here. What I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go ahead and just bend it around like that and then put it right here. So that said, we want to put our solder on the back of the pot first. and then we melt that into the pool. And 
done. So you shouldn't have to hold it there for very long. I used, you know, probably a tiny bit more solder than I needed to, but really, it's, you use just enough solder to get it done. Okay. So before I get ahead of myself, I'm also going to go ahead, um, because it's got this layer of film here, you probably don't necessarily need to uh, run a ground from pot to pot, but the diagram still shows it, so I'm gonna do it. And uh, on a passive system like this, you are the ground. So um, you need everything touching each other uh, with ground to keep from having any shorts. Okay, we can try to do a couple different fancy little things here with this uh, to try to keep it one length. Or I can just um, cut each piece as I need to. Gonna try doing is using a set of wire cutters here. This is actually just I'm just trying to trim off trim off the sheathing without cutting through the wire. I think that went well. So what you're gonna see me doing here is actually cutting off in the center. If we can get the sheathing off without cutting too deep, we can then slide it. And that will let us leave one piece of um, wire, but have it ground. Yeah, there we go. All three pots. I don't know if you saw that, but hopefully you did. And that's going to work famously. So again, this, you can see this wire is a little longer than it needs to be. But again, that allows us to kind of bend and, and shape as we need to. All right, so we're going to put, if you're concerned about cut pot codes, you can kind of watch where you're putting your solder. Otherwise, it doesn't matter too much. Just remelt that and then melt that into the top. Again, this wire is pre-tinned, so it's got solder built on it already. Pretty. We can add a little more just to put a nice bulb on the end. I don't think it's necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway just because it looks prettier. Because I said, pretty counts. And if you're concerned with cold solder joints, it's, it's really just a matter of kind of looking at what you did, making sure it's clean. You can see that it's tight. All right, so you just want everything so it's going to be out of the way that it can all fit um, under the the pick art can fit in the cavity properly. All right, so now we're grounded. So now we're gonna look at our wiring diagram, see that we make sure everything goes in the right spot.
All right, so you can kind of see in there where the blade goes. For instance, if I'm putting it in the neck position, you could see the blade lines up with that one. So we know that one is the neck pickup. So we make sure we trace the right one. Put it there. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can pre-tin the wire, uh, the, the, um, the switch, or not. Um, I'm gonna just do it not this time, just because I wanna see if I can get just pretty flow on there. There we go, and so you can see that it's kind of a good flow and it's there solid. And so with each of these pickups, we can pretty easily see which one goes where. And again, it's okay that if you do need to kind of retouch what you just done, it's not gonna hurt anything. I already can see that this one needs a little more love. Some people will say don't blow on solder. Okay, so those feel good. See that those terminals have a little bit of play, but the solder connection is good. And then I'm just going to snip off the excess here just to keep everything clean and pretty. Now you can go through, and I've seen them people wrap it and tie it on, which is totally doable. Um, you do want to keep in mind that you'll also run into um, problems getting it off if you ever need to. Uh, especially, again, I keep talking about that bridge pickup. Okay, and so you can see I'm just using these leftover pieces here. So that one's a little longer than I need it, so I'm going to cut that down a little bit. But this is going to jumper from that lug to that lug. So it basically connects this side of the blade to this side. And you see that jumper touches uh, that um, swiper, we'll call it, in all positions. Because if it's designed, things stay in place pretty well. They do do things like solder buddies and stuff you can try to use uh, with the wires, but it shouldn't be necessary. Just double checking my work as I go. It's got a good bead of solder on it. Not huge. this wire. This allows me to kind of measure things up as I go. And I love working with this uh, cloth wrapped wire because again the wire itself is pre-tinned and it kind of just you trim it back and push the uh, cloth back and continue on rather than having to worry about stripping each thing each time. You'll notice with what I'm doing here, keeping it nice and clean and tight again. Clean your solder tip periodically. I'm just noticing a little bit of a green buildup on there. It's not the best quality solder I'm using, unfortunately. 
It's just a really, really old reel of it. All right, and then I do periodically just check to make sure everything's nice and smooth and working properly. So we've got these lugs are all being used, and so these lugs will now go to our tone pots and send the signal from the pickup to the pot uh, so it can do your tone control. So I'm just checking my diagram, and it's saying that we want a jumper between these two lugs which will go to one pot, and then this lug will go to another pot, and that will run our tone controls. So you will notice I don't have enough wire, white wire left over to go to both pots. So that's why it's good that I made sure that I also had a little extra wire to do the rest of the job. What I'm gonna do here is Pull that back a little bit, get rid of a little bit of this housing, the, the white cloth. So I can do as clean a jumper as possible here. Sometimes if you have steady hands and aren't rushing things too much, you can actually throw these in and then um, have them just stay put while you solder them in. So while I'm doing this, I also know that one of these leads are going to the pot. So this one's actually going to go to the back pot because this is going to control the bridge and middle pickups. So again, I want to get that to the right length. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to go ahead and before I solder it in, I'm also going to put this lead in there. That way I'm only soldering this component once. It is absolutely possible to burn up these components as well, even though they're pretty pretty well built, pretty, you know, time tested, if you will. Okay. Sorry about all the if you wills. All right, again, we're just looking at our solder. Looks good. trim off the excess so I don't have any on that one to worry about. I guess I do. Turn those two in. Clean and tidy. And then the diagram says that this one goes to the back. And it's gonna go to this lug here. And since I've already tinned all those, we should just be able to heat it up, slide in our wire, and just look and make sure that's a good solder joint. Clean and tidy. So then this will actually lay down here. All right, and so we know that this last one will go to here. And actually will attach to the center. That's interesting because these two lugs will actually go to there when we go to do the um, tone circuit. better once we uh, put everything together. Keep the mistakes down to a minimum. So I'm not going to need any extra wire for this project. And I've actually got a little bit of black wire left over for my next project, which is kind of cool. So Amazon has a lot of the stuff available, including this uh, other cloth wrapped wire that I'm using. Um, and it's reasonably priced. I can do a bunch of projects for like 10 bucks. Uh, you can get black, white, and yellow. You can get them sold together like I bought the black and white together. Uh, I wasn't worried about yellow wire 
for anything I was doing, so I didn't worry about that. Okay, so I'm actually going to redo this one a little bit because I want to reposition it. Oop, like the other stuff. And that's where we got to be careful not to overheat things because whew, I just got that super hot. So it took longer for it to set. Also created a weird little bulb there. So I'm going to clean my soldering iron. Give it another little touch. It's a nice, shiny, clean solder joint. One of the ways you can tell a cold solder joint, it's not a, a give-all, but um, when it's got kind of a, a hazy look to it, when it's not shiny, oftentimes that's because uh, it didn't get a good take. And then this one goes to the center lug. So I know I'm kind of silly this way, but I like to also solder from the outside in. Does it matter? Probably not, but again, it probably looks better, I think. There we go. And then when we get things kind of going the same way, they all look about the same. So I could have very well used a little bit longer lead on that. So I'm gonna leave that a little bit out of the way because I'm quite certain I'm gonna need it out of the way when uh, I go to put in the, the rest of the tone circuit. So it can be pretty tedious trying to do the, the rest of the circuit here. All depends what you're doing. So it's kind of interesting. Um, luckily I have the parts I need, but um, the pickups did not come with the uh, tone cap. I didn't think too much about it. So that was one of those, remember I said make sure you know uh, you have everything you need. Luckily, my grease bucket circuit does have everything I need. And there's actually a different schematic for that. I get a lot of my parts from this um, X grinders. You can see that. Um, and it was just kind of by default, I'd ordered it and then it just happened that that's who it came from. So I wasn't paying attention uh, when I ordered it on Amazon. So the grease bucket tone circuit that I'm using, um, basically, now this is what it is. That's actually for something else. I also have one, um, one treble bleed circuit for volume pots left here. I'm not gonna put that on this guitar because I want this guitar to be able to do things with like fuzz pedals and stuff that the treble bleed doesn't let it do as well. Anyway, um, grease bucket tone circuit, what it does is it helps retain the volume of the guitar when you turn the tone down. And so it gets bassier, if you will, um, but you still retain your volume. Uh, Fender's been using this circuit for a while. I remember, um, Highway 1 guitars a while back had them. Um, and then you, you find them on different things as well. But I believe the Highway 1 guitars were the first guitars I saw that had them on them. So what we're doing is kind of a combination of what's on this diagram. So basically, I don't know if you can see it, but it's saying that the tone cap there attaches to the outside lug on this one and then goes to the middle lug on this one 
and then we kind of branch off of that here and then we'll also put a resistor between where the capacitor grounds and the one we're also adding uh, uh, 0.1 microfarads uh, capacitor across the two main lugs. And the way I'm doing this, it's actually going to end up um, working for both, or for, for um, all the pickups. Sorry, I'm just kind of looking my stuff over here as I'm looking at it, making sure that I do it right. See, I'm putting it on these two lugs because this is what's going to make it so it works on both pots properly. Some smaller fire, you know, those fires. So, what I'm going to do here is actually so I'm using a lot less space to mount that in place. And I'm only actually going to solder in one of these lugs because the center one I still need to feed the capacitor wire through. So I'm going to solder this one just to keep it in place because this, this one's done. I know, I'm blowing on it. It's old habits. And this is where the glasses come in handy too. Make sure I don't cut off anything off that I don't want to. There. Clean and pretty. So this one will get soldered once I put the, uh, the rest of the leads on. So. This guy. This one feeds. Because these pots, remember, they're they're turned opposite directions, so this is gonna be a little weird. This one needs to feed through here and then go to the center lug on the other one. Look at that, first try. Okay. And then this guy can get soldered in. I 
And so I can put it in the, that same pool of solder right there that that other one's in. Or I can change it up if I choose to. Um, I'm actually going to, sorry, I took it off camera. So I'm just going to trim this to where I want it. And I'm actually going to go ahead and use that other little pool of solder that I've got the grounds in. And keep everything clean together and tight. So you can see I don't touch anything too long with the soldering iron. That's in there snug, so that's all set there. Now you can see it's still open there. And what I need to do here is there's also that resistor going between this capacitor and where it grounds. So I'm actually going to go ahead and run that from here. And you can see it's got this extra little piece of uh, covering on it to protect it from shorting out anywhere. Basically what I end up with is we've got these three leads here that all go to that same spot. So we just lay that one in place. And we put our bead of solder on there. So yes, this is a lot more going on here than just running that single lead from the capacitor through this lug and then grounding it on this side um, or through this capacitor. Uh, but this resistor actually needs to ground out to finish off the circuit. Okay, so now this is all gonna be in here nice and firm so I can kind of get things in the position I want them in. This can actually come down here now because I'm no longer soldering in there. And then this will get soldered here. So it's just a little resistor that gets grounded here. And so it's really not gonna mess with, you know, shorting anything out or causing any major tunnel changes, except for the one that we want, which is to um, not knock out all the volume when we use our tone circuit. You know what's crazy is this is just about all we've got for this project. So I didn't follow my rule there. I was gonna put a bead of solder there before I did that. Also another handy little tip. It's a small, Standard screwdriver is great for holding things down when you solder. So if you need to, you just hold the tip of it down while the solder dries and you're good. All right, so except for securing our wires down, this is all wired up and ready to go. I know uh, with that, that uh, grease bucket tone circuit, it does look a little different than you might be expecting. Um, but really, if that grease bucket tone circuit weren't there, it would just be this um, capacitor's leg going to the center on this pot, and then it would be done. Turn off my soldering iron. So, um, I won't be installing it yet uh, into the, the guitar, but I will tell you that uh, what I will be doing is... Um, when I go to mount it in the guitar. Oh. 
That's silly of me. I'm not done. You wanna tell me what I missed? If you notice I didn't wire it from the switch to the volume pot yet, you're correct. <laughs> so we're gonna need another little lead. Um, it's not the end of the world if you want to just go ahead and use black wire uh, because you'll have extra black wire from uh, the pots uh, and from from the pickups. Man, I'm just blowing it all over the place. But um, if you want to keep it all looking factory, then you'll want to use another strand. So that was really silly of me, but um, at least I'm not completing this video, not completing what I was doing. And so something I had missed when I was doing it earlier, and you may have caught it while I was doing it, so please forgive me, is that the lead here, the jumpers from this side to that side, actually needs to be connected to the outside lug on the volume pot. The middle lug will be going to the hot on the input jack, then you'll have one more ground line going from the uh, volume pot to the input jack, you also have one more ground line going from the volume pot to the um, claw on this on the um, bridge, or if it's a set bridge, uh, to the bridge itself. So usually you'll have your two grounds just coming off here, where the uh, other pots are, or you know wherever you want them. Again, however you think it looks cleanest, um, and then the hot comes off the center. So what I'm going to do is just carefully move that out of my way. Again, clean our soldering iron tip. Put a little solder on there. And then we're just gonna carefully add this in on that lug. Should just slide right on. There it goes, just like that. Okay. Let me check our work, make sure it's in there. Check to make sure we're not messing anything up. That looks good, so I don't even need to do any trimming. And this will feed through here. Doo, 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 doo. And I want this to go on that outside lug. Again, that lug's been soldered, so we'll just go do. So sometimes I'll put a little angle on these two. All right, so I just lost a little bit of my solder, so I'm gonna actually add a little bit more here. It's just everything in moderation. If you need to use a little more solder, that's fine. Just don't overdo it. Okay. I know, blowing on the solder. So I'm making sure that looks good. And then we're gonna trim my end. Another neat thing you can do here is you can, with the cloth wrap, you can just push the uh, the wrap back over uh, if you had pushed it back. Okay, so now we carefully bend this down and get that down here. So those all kind of follow the same path. Look pretty good. And all our pickup leads all kind of follow the same path. And you can see there's there's enough cable that if we need to make any adjustments, you can, but there's not so much that um, it's creating a mess. Now we turn that off. I'm a big fan of zip ties. Uh, we could just use the tape uh, like they used back then. Um, I just don't have any of that. So we're just going to put one here. Keep all this together. Now don't worry, you don't have to worry too much about adjusting the pickup height. It's not going to end up pulling on those leads any harder. You can see there's just a little bit of slack there anyway. And I'm going to use one more over here, just keeping everything together. And 
Now, sometimes depending on the, uh, the pickup mount, your bridge pickup may not have room for you to do stuff like this. Um, but as you can see, because I soldered it up here, I can actually move this to right to the very back of the pot. And secure it there. That, to me, looks pretty darn clean. Be nice to see what this sounds like. All right, one more thing I'm gonna to touch on real quick. Uh, the switch tip. I've done this in uh, some of my other videos. Um, those videos didn't get much, many views, so um, I would like to point this out again. First of all, really quick, I turned off the soldering iron already. I cleaned the tip. As it's cooling, I put a tiny bit more soldering iron on it just so it's ready for next time. Okay, look that everything's clean. Anyway, okay. So, uh, usually this is very smooth and your switch tip can often fall off pretty easily uh, because it is so smooth. So what I like to do is actually I just want to push it on here just to see how hard it is to put on because this one's probably going to be really good. Yeah, that's a very firm fit already. But if you have a guitar that it is a problem with, Tellys will have it sometimes, you can take a pair of diagonal cutters and just cut, let's see and just cut a couple tiny little, almost little teeth in there. And those grooves will hold that knob on. That's selector switch tip. And so I didn't cut all the way through. It's not like it's gonna uh, damage how t strong that is, but what it is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that tip stays on strong. So with that, I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover on this video. Um, things about placement uh, for the uh, knobs. There you go, nice and tight. Um, I tend to like to have the um, knobs so when you have the volume all the way up and you're looking down at the guitar, I like to have it so it faces the 10 will face you like that. So some people want it to say t tone, you know, when it, or volume when it's uh, all the way up. I think it makes the most sense to go ahead and kind of, with the guitar on, um, decide where that faces the right way. And then we just push them on. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Um, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this to be helpful. Please like and subscribe. Um, that way I know to keep making these videos. I know it's been a while since I've made one, but uh, I've been very easy. Anyway, thank you. I'm really excited about this. This is going to be pretty sweet. Uh, hopefully this video helped you out a lot. Talk to you soon.